There are two criteria to define the first month of the Hebrew year. One is the rabbinic criteria, letting the month containing the first full moon of the year be Nisan. The other is the biblical criteria, letting the month containing the first crescent moon of the year be Nisan. As you can see, the biblical criteria gives you a first month that lies entirely in the new year, and the rabbinic criteria gives you a month that straddles the two years and often begins in winter. Now I purposely selected a group of years where the first full moon of the year is very close to the equinox to show the rabbinic criteria in action. As you can see, every one of these Nissans contains the first full moon of the year. This is what the rabbinic criteria looks like. And now to get a feel for what the biblical criteria looks like. As you can see, my diagram here not only shows the first full moon of each year, it also shows the first crescent moon of each year. And as you can clearly see, every one of these Nissans contains the first crescent moon of the year. This is what the biblical criteria looks like. Okay, let's have one more look at that. Rabbinical criteria, biblical criteria. They're either all on one side or they're all on the other. Now let's see what the calculated calendar looks like. Uh, this is all over the map. As you can see, not any one criteria is being used consistently. Sometimes it's rabbinic, sometimes it's biblical. It depends on what year it is. This is supposed to be using the rabbinic criteria. They've been using this calendar for 1,500 years. Anybody who tells you 2014 is the last tetrad and they're using this calendar, uh, they're not getting the full picture. Sometimes they're seeing the tetrads through the rabbinic lens. Sometimes they're seeing the tetrads through the biblical lens. Is it about time we see the sample space from which this calendar is drawing on? Shouldn't we see the tetrads through the rabbinic lens? by themselves and see the tetrads through the biblical lens by themselves instead of some random smattering of them. And here they are, the separate strands untangled from which the calculated calendar was drawing on. As you can see, in the year 227, the calculated calendar didn't agree with both strands. Uh, in the year 1493, the calculated calendar agreed with the rabbinic strand. Uh, in the year 1967, the calculated calendar agreed with the biblical strand. Uh, 1967, that's a real red flag. The, the uh, rabbinic strand missed the tetrad for the most important event in Israel's history, the recapture of Jerusalem. That is a big red flag on the rabbinic strand. And you can see the calculated calendar was drawing on the biblical strand for that tetrad. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. As you can see, all three agree on the 2014-2015 tetrad, but after that the calculated calendar veers away just like it did in the year 227 and doesn't agree with either of the criteria. Uh, the 2061 tetrad is probably a little suspect considering that the rabbinic strand missed the 1967 tetrad. And if you believe, like some, that we are on the last pope, I don't think Pope Francis is going to live to be 124 years old. And so that leaves us with the biblical strand, which was the only strand that had the 1967 tetrad from which the calculated calendar drew on. And Pope Francis would only have to live to be 95 to reach the year 2032. So I'd say that's a pretty solid date there. And 2014 isn't the last tetrad in either calendar.